My name is Ms. Rojas, Brenda Rojas, that is, and I am a fashion design educator at the High School of Fashion Industries. Uh, today, we are interviewing an industry leader um, in fashion design, Mr. Hans. How are you? Thank you so I'm, much for participating. I'm very good. Thank you for having me. I would like to ask you a few questions about your exciting career. How long have you been in the fashion industry? Um, I basically graduated in 1993. So that would be, I think, like 26 years or so. Um, but I have been in this industry, fashion and, and beauty now also. Oh, so okay. a while. And it's actually not something that I knew I was going to get into originally, funny enough, because it was one of those things where I knew I liked artful and artistic things, but I didn't know mm -hmm. what to do with that. And um, luckily I had a great teacher, uh, an art teacher that actually told me, oh, you know, maybe you should look into something like industrial design. And I thought, well, what is that? And then she explained to me that it's really about the design of, of objects, uh, that everyday object that you use, um, from cars to beds to computers to all of that. And then I found out that there was a lot of kind of technical stuff that went with that. And I was not good at all. I was a horrible kind of math, science, and all of those disciplines I was really bad at. Um, so I thought maybe that's not right for me. And then she said, why don't you try graphic design? And so I asked again, well, what is that? And then she said, well, it's, you know, everything that you look at, whether it be like a poster, a book, a magazine, or all, you know, all things that sound very obsolete now. But at the time, um, she said, you know, somebody designs those things. And um, I thought, oh, that's interesting. So I started looking into that and uh, decided that that was something I was interested in. And then luckily that branched into also like advertising and things like that. But I didn't even know necessarily I was gonna end up more in the fashion side of things. I always knew that I liked fashion, I liked style and things like that, but I didn't know that it was really a business, you know, to be in and, and certainly not from the advertising point of view because I thought advertising was, you know, toothpaste and cars and, you know, things like that. Um, and I thought, oh, that seems really interesting that you can actually be in this world of fashion that I like and advertise the world of fashion. So very happy. Okay. Um, I want you, I would like to know which um, educational institution you went through. Um, basically, well, I'm from Canada. First of all, I'm from Montreal, Canada. So okay. I moved here to come to Parsons School of Design. Um, okay. So it was one of those things where, you know, in Canada, there wasn't really a good school to be able to do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, well, you know, New York probably has some of the best schools. So I applied at Parsons. I applied at SVA also, School of Visual Arts. And I also applied at Pratt Institute uh, out in Brooklyn. And, uh, you know, had to put a portfolio, extensive portfolio together. And um, I... What was your portfolio? I, I'm sorry. What was, what was your portfolio like? There were a lot of different things. They had asked us very specific things. Um, so part of it was a, a lot of drawing stuff in it. Um, so drawing and painting. Um, also some photography they wanted to see. Um, and then uh, some exercises in typography very specifically. Hi, so, um, so it was a little mix of things. But ironically, you know, there was this one school in Montreal that I, I, that was okay and I tried to get in and had to create a portfolio for them too. And I actually didn't get accepted um, there. And I got very upset because I thought, you know, my life is over. What am I going to do? Um, I'm not good at this. Um, I'm never going to make it. You know, all the things that you, you think uh, are impossible to achieve because somebody says no to you. And, mm. and then luckily, you know, my father is the one who said to me, well, you know, uh, maybe they don't understand you. Maybe you're more talented than they understand you to be. And so um, he's the one who said to me, why don't we try, you know, some good schools somewhere else in the United States. So that's how I came up with the three schools in New York 
Uh, plus, I love New York because I, I would come here a couple of times a year because my grandparents used to live in Queens. So we'd come visit all the time. Um, uh -huh. And I always said, one day I will live here. And, um, and yeah, so I did the portfolio and it worked really well because I got accepted at the three schools and then I had a choice to make. Um, and I decided to go to Parsons, A, because I thought their program was really good and it was taught by industry professionals that were working industry professionals. And also because they had a year abroad program um, in Paris, which I was really interested in uh, going to Europe also just to expand my- Did you go? Um, yes, went and spent a year. Um, over How there. was that? It was, it was amazing. It was amazing. It's one of those things where luckily I speak French because French is my oh. first language. Being from Montreal, you kind of, you know, people are bilingual there. So, um, so it was easy for me in that sense. But also I, I, I just love Paris and I had, I, you know, when you go somewhere and you think, I feel like I've been here before uh -huh. in another life maybe, but that's what it felt like. It felt very comfortable. And you know, it's such an amazing, beautiful city. Everywhere you walk, everything you look at is, is like a work of art, everything. So it's very inspiring. Um, I love the Picasso yeah. Museum in yeah. Uh, Paris. Yeah, all the museums are so great. And that's the thing, like art history classes were done mm. in the museums. In so the you museum. were actually right there in front of the, of the art, um, which, which is, is really amazing to be able to, to do it that way. So I was very lucky. And, um, but then, you know, I had a thought of maybe staying there uh -huh. to, to start my career after my senior year. Because um, I was there actually my, my junior year. So I had one more year to complete. And everybody said to me, you know, New York is so much better for what you're going to do. And as mm -hmm. far as building a career, you should go back to New York. So I reluctantly left and came back to New York, but then got right back in the swing of things. So I was very happy to be back. That's awesome. So how did you land in fashion? What, what catapulted you there? Like... How did well, you get there? I, it was actually not planned at all because I, when I was at Parsons, you know, the disciplines were very varied. So we were learning everything from photography to traditional advertising and package design and typography, all those different things. Um, but ironically enough, there was no kind of fashion design, um, advertising or communication classes. Um, and I find that ironic because there was actually obviously a huge fashion program at Parsons. Um, and so I was in contact with fashion designers all the time. A lot of them were friends of mine and all that, but we actually never cross discipline, did any work together, um, which now when I look back, I find is such a, uh, such a miss. But, um, but ultimately when I was in my uh, senior year, I got an internship at a, design agency that was called um, M and Company, and it no longer exists now, but it was kind of like the, the hot little agency. And funny enough, they didn't even have a fashion client um, when I started interning there. And while I was interning, they got Isaac Mizrahi as a yes. client. So that was kind of my first taste of, of something fashion. And I really liked it. And I, and I thought, oh, wow, you know, I, I want to work here. Um, after Did I you got, get to work with Isaac directly? I, I actually, no, not at the time. I did not, I got to work on layouts for his fashion advertising, but not with him directly. Okay. Um, and so then I, I thought, okay, well, if I work here, I'm going to get more and more uh, fashion knowledge and all of that. Exactly. So the deal was with my, you know, potential new employer. I had said to him, um, I was interested in a job there. He actually offered me a job. And I just said, what I'd like to do, though, is during the summer, I'd like to, to take the summer off and travel because I feel like it's the only summer in my life I'll be able to do that. And uh, so he said, I agree. You should go out and see the world. And then he said, come back in September and start working. So that wow. was the plan. Uh, but of course, you know, life happens. And all of a sudden, I get back um, to New York after my long summer trip all over Europe. And uh, I had a, uh, my, on my answering machine, I had a message from my employer saying, I've got bad news. Um, I decided to close the agency and I'm moving to Italy to go work for a fashion company uh, called uh, United Colors of Benetton. Oh my God, go <laughs> I would have left too. <laughs> I know, right? 
<laughs> and he said, I'm going to go and work on a magazine that they're doing over there called Colors Magazine. So I then I didn't have a job. And so, uh, of course, again, I thought, okay, I'm devastated. What am I going to do? Um, my life is over. I'm going to have to go back to Canada. You know, very dramatic, all of that. Um, and then the following day, I got a call actually from a school uh, mate of mine who I had graduated with. Um, and she said, I landed at Donna Karen. Um, wow. So uh, I was like, oh, that's amazing. And she said, well, actually, I need help because we're two people here and I can't do all of this work. So I trust you. And because I had built up a really good relationship with her while we were in school. And one of the things that I think is funny that our teachers said to us when we started school was become friends with everybody. Exactly. And never burn a bridge because all of the people that you go to school with right now are all of the people that are going to be in the industry later and you will see you will find yourselves competing for jobs giving each other jobs um building being things interviewed together. by them being interviewed, be interviewed by them by that them. happened to me <laughs> yeah so it was very good advice and and it's so funny because i literally this happened probably like right before covid happened Happened like three months ago. I got a um, uh, uh, we got a client, uh, Gloria mm -hmm. Vanderbilt Jeans. Oh, um, and I went in and literally I was looking at the 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 room. There was a room full of people. There was like five people, and one right. of the women that were there, I kept looking at. And I was like, she looks so familiar. Oh, and God. finally, at the end of the meeting, she got up and she said, "You don't remember me, do you?" And I was like, "I I do, but I don't know from where." And she said, "We went to Parsons together." And she was I was a fashion major, and I was the girlfriend of Ralph. Ralph was one of my friends. Whatever this whole thing. Yeah. And and I thought, there you go. Thirty years later again, you know, is here's somebody that really just gave me a job, like became a client because, you know, she knew me, she trusted me. We had a good relationship 30 years ago. So it's, it, there's a lot of value to put in, into that uh, for sure. So what is, what is your like career title now? Are you a fashion I'm designer? A chief, chief creative officer. So that, and that's a, a relative CEO? thing. CCO. CCO, my bad. CCO, mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a relatively new title from the last, like, I'd say like 10 years. Uh -huh. um, that didn't exist at all. When I, when I graduated, that was not a, a job. Um, but I think it became apparent to a lot of companies and agencies and all of that, that it was important to have somebody that could look at kind of the big picture of things. The big picture. Because in my, in, in my industry, you know, the way that you kind of move up as you start off, you know, as a kind of a junior designer. Yes. Well, actually, no, usually you start off as an intern. Then, then you become a junior designer. Then you can become like a junior art director. Then you become an art director, a senior art director. Then you become a, a associate creative director. Then you go up to creative director. And then after that, it's kind of like these, you know, group creative directors or VPs or stuff like that. And finally, you get to a chief creative officer. But, you know, in order to get there, I think obviously you have to prove yourself and you have to prove a lot of different things because at that level, it's not just about being a great art director and a great kind of having an artistic eye, but it's also understanding business. And, and I think the business is not just the business of advertising, but it's the business of fashion, the business of beauty, um, and to be able to have conversations with your clients that um, that are not just about what the final product is going to be, but also about how you're going to get to that and what is the strategy even behind um, being able to achieve a product that is going to resonate with, um, with consumers and how are you going to communicate it? Um, because ultimately, you know, I think communication is, is the business really that we're in, right? There's a company that creates a product there's a fashion designer that creates a dress. There's an accessories designer that makes a bag. There's a beauty company that makes makeup. And then you have to take that and you have to make it appealing to people. But what's different today than it was 20 years ago is that before you just had to talk about the product. Now you actually have to talk about yourself. And yourself, I mean like the brand. Right. Um, and, and so that's why individuals have to 
brand themselves because for people to want your product it's it's great that the product is good that i think is is the minimum that you have to have to appeal to them but then the reason why they'll come back is because they have what we call shared values with you so if you are somebody that's into sustainability for example yeah. then obviously your customer is into sustainability also and wants to find people and surround themselves with products that reflect um that their lifestyle that lifestyle exactly mm -hmm. so it's much more than just the product it's the it's what i keep saying it's not just the what it's the why like why did why? i find this this way and why did i choose this and people now love transparency they want to know the story behind they everything. want to know the story and and so i think that's the evolution that's been very interesting because in you know when i started it was kind of the opposite nobody wanted to know the behind the scenes they just wanted the final product they just wanted to see the advertising right. and then things shifted because all of a sudden people started realizing well the advertising is maybe not the reality it's it's a it's fabricated and, right. and people wanted to know the truth and, and the reality and some of the truth was ugly truths and some of the truths were beautiful truths um but ultimately it made i think brands have to be responsible in, in, in in a way that they didn't have to before because before. now people wanted to know well how did you produce that and who right. worked on that and is that you know is, is that done in a fair way are you paying the employees right are you polluting the world what are you doing you know and so brands had to become much more accountable so they had to make decisions, you know, and that becomes really important when you're communicating the brand because all of a sudden it's, it, you know, there's more story to tell. And the other thing that's amazing is the fact that then, you know, we started to have more places to tell the stories because originally exactly. what we had was we had a magazine, we had a TV, <laughs> um, we had radio. Um, but that was kind of about, about it. And then all of a sudden, you know, with social media and the internet and all of that, it was amazing to be able to see all the different messages that you could talk about because it's hard in advertising to be able to tell the whole story of a brand, but you can make a little film and have it on your website. And then all of a sudden you can say much more there and go into much more detail. So a lot of what I do is, is exactly that, is going and working with brands and saying, okay, here, here's your product, but here's your <laughs> mission. And, and here is what you are telling your customer that the reason why you exist. Um, and, and then it's marrying those two things to make sure that people understand that there is thought and there is um, both from a design point of view, but from a marketing point of view, from a presentation point of view and all that, put into everything that, that you do. Because especially in fashion, you know, we're creating worlds, right? It's like, that's why fashion shows are so great, because you create a whole world to make your collection come to life. It, it, in, and you transport, you know, the customer and the viewer to be able to go to this place that makes them think you know and makes them you know desire something that they might not even have known they wanted you know and, and that's the thing about fashion i always find interesting is the fact that you know customers don't know yet what they want because the creativity want, of fashion right. designers is what it, it drives things forward because nobody knew that they wanted you know mini skirts when mini skirts were invented like before that that wasn't even well, bikinis or bikinis or, or you know or women wearing suits or like, all of that stuff so you need designers designers drive culture you know because right. they push forward because they're never satisfied you know they are always searching and looking for the next thing and uh, and you know we were talking about inspiration before and it's true inspiration comes from everywhere and everything it is in sights and sounds in tastes and view and visions and all of that and so to me i always think like you know the most the most important thing in any creative field is keeping the file cabinets full you know that oh. are in your head so that you're always absorbing things that you might not need right away 
but you always have access to. And so it's always there. And so you see something, you hear something, it could be a poem, it could be a film, it could be a play, it could be a video on YouTube, it, it could be anything. Um, yeah. And you might not even know how you're going to use it, but it's there. And I think to be able to have the history of culture also is this very important thing. Like I always find, you know, that I love when people have references and they know what I'm talking about. Um, when I refer to something, whether it be a film or a, a piece of literature, or a piece of art and all of that. And, and, and it's great because I think, you know, reinvention happens because you take all those influences and you refuse them in a, in a new way, in your own way, your own interpretation. Because at the end of the day, I always say, you know, nothing is really completely new. Everything is borrowed, but it's like, what do you borrow and what piece do you borrow and what you combine it with and what you add to it is what makes it new and, and fresh and modern and, and all that. Um, so it's, it's to me it's very important for creative people to always keep being inspired and keeping their eyes open and their ears open and, and just absorbing. Absorbing everything, yes, I agree with you. Um, what advice do you have for any of our students that um, may wanna pursue um, advertising, marketing, um, as you did? Um, I, I, listen, I think it's a very exciting thing to do because you realize how powerful it is. Creating, I think, advertising or, or imagery can and does affect people in, in every way. And it affects people positively sometimes if it's good and negatively other times. And you have mm -hmm. to understand that you, you hold that power. And you have to be, I think, very conscious of the effects of words and imagery that you, that you put out there. Um, mm -hmm. So... To me, if somebody's interested in advertising, I think it's, it's good if they're interested in it because of its power, not necessarily because of just kind of the glossiness that, comes, that can come with it, but it's mm -hmm. an amazing industry because you get to be around creative people all the time. You get to merge this idea of creativity and, and commerce and business together, which is different than just being an artist. Um, right. And it's also interesting because you, every designer you work with or every brand that you work with is an opportunity to learn about that business. Like I, for, for, for example, did not know a lot about the beauty business. And now that I work in it, I've, I've learned so mm -hmm. much about it and I've learned about it also from a global perspective and what different markets look for and how cultures are so different and standards of beauty are very different yeah. everywhere and, and all that. So it's almost like a sociological course I've, I've gotten. So it opens up a lot of doors. So to me, it's like a great industry if you're very curious about people and places and cultures and, and, and creativity. Um, and, and it's great because it's, it's ever changing because you never do the same thing twice. twice. I mean, it's not like working at a bank, for example, that you go to work, you know what you're going to do every day. Um, this, you never know what you're going to do any day. So even though, you know, my days are, I have a schedule, you know, that I follow, but within that schedule, every meeting that I'm in, it, there's a new thing. There's a problem to solve. And some of it I have to solve strategically, some of it I have to solve creatively, some of it I have to solve artfully. Um, and I never quite know which side of my brain I'm going to need to use any given day. But that to me is what is exciting about it because it's, it's unpredictable. Um, and it's, um, and I don't know, it's very- and You powerful. get to search through your little file cabinet, right? Through the file cabinet, yeah. And it's interesting to me because now I actually find it interesting that today, because we have access actually to this enormous file cabinet, which is the, the internet, it's Hi. almost overwhelming. Because when I was in school, you know, really when I was searching for inspiration for a specific project or something, I would go to a library and I would mm -hmm. spend 
the whole weekend at the library and basically pull out every book that I can off the bookshelf based on what I read on the spine of the book. And I'd be like, let me look at this, look through it, look through it, look through it. So in that process, I actually found a lot of things to put in my file cabinet that were not necessary Mm -hmm. for the project I was researching at the moment, but just because I was just open, eyes open, looking at everything, I was storing. And now I think it's much harder with the internet because there, you, I mean, there's just so much that's Mm. there and, and to try to, it's not as manageable. You know what I mean? a library was like, okay, I've got three rows of books. This is what I'm going to do today. And I don't know, the internet, I mean, you could be on Yeah, the clear direction you know, with the, the internet your is you're everywhere. Yeah, yeah you're everywhere. And it's, it's, you can get lost and distracted, I think, so easily. So you have to understand how to search. And that's where I, I find having references is good because you've got the reference. You can at least start there and look for the reference. Oh and then that makes you other places but it's you know it's an amazing tool but it is a tool you know I always say it's not the solution it's just a tool for you you have to have the idea and then I think you can go and validate the idea or research things to augment your idea um, on the internet but the internet's not going to give you the idea you know um I think it's always important to understand that because even in, in my world of advertising, it's the same thing because that's what we do. We have to come up with ideas. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think what, to me, what gives me ideas most of the time is people. It, it's, it, it's understanding what people are doing, what they're listening to, how they're acting, where they're going, what they're liking. And the more I understand that, the more that I can formulate a way to engage with them so it's it's just Um, a different way to work i have a a question for you Uh, where what is your position on cultural appropriation i think listen i think we live in a world that is global now so it's very different than it was a long time ago because everybody now has access to every culture and has visuals that kind of are, are are available to them. I think the problem is taking those visuals out of context and not understanding what they actually mean. And also, like, how do you use that in a way that it's almost more, should be more a way to educate people on culture than just appropriate it and just kind of sell with something you don't even understand what it actually means. And so I just think that this opening up to the world has been a great thing, but at the same time, it's a dangerous thing if you don't do your homework and you don't really dive into understanding all of the meanings of culture. And there's so many subtleties that unless you are part of that culture, you don't know. You just just don't know. know. And, And that's the thing. It's interesting because there's a lot of companies now, you know, that have, that have hired people um, to make sure that these kinds of, of issues that companies like H&M and Prada and whatever have had in the last couple of years don't happen. But I don't even know how that can be a solution because those people, again, they do not know about every culture that exists in the world and every nuance and subtlety of the meaning and the codes and, and all of that. So again, I always say to me what's the most important is that places of business have a very diverse group of people working there because that's the only way to be able to have somebody that has a seat at the table to say, guys, no, we can't do that. Like that is not right. Or this sends completely the wrong message and all that. It has to come from the inside. And so it's so important to me that there's more creatives of every culture and of color and all that, that get, educated and that get put into the workforce and that enter all these different companies to be able to be an influence and to be able to do work that is going to be more representative of the full world that we live in. Um, And that's a hard thing to do because, you know, we don't have, I mean, for even for somebody like me in my position, there are very few men of color that are, and, and women of color even less, um, mm-hmm. that are in the position. And so 
you know, and I've had to work really hard to get there. Um, and I've had to prove myself harder than everybody else. And all those things that, you know, we hear all the time, they, they're all true. And, and, you know, and being in situations sometimes where, you know, I was the most powerful person that was coming to a meeting and, you know, I would be downstairs at the, at the reception desk and they'd ask me if I was dropping off a package, you know, because they thought ah. I was connected. And so it's, you know, it's this kind of thing that, that still happens today and it will still continue to happen. But, you know, I take great pride in, in being where I am and, and, and nobody helped me to get there. It was, it was me and I worked really hard to, to get there. Um, and, and so for me now, you know, it's become about you know, paying it forward also a little bit. So, you know, one of the things that I, that I started doing is this, this kind of little, um, creative coalition, um, uh -huh. called CCD, um, creative coalition for diversity that is about basically being able to give a face and a voice to the people that I know who are in the industry, people of color in the industry that can speak then to um, young people that don't even necessarily have a role model or they don't even know what is possible. And For mentors. I, I mm -hmm. that, well, yeah, one of the problems is even, I think the parents are a problem because a lot of parents, when it comes to creative fields, say, well, that's not really a real job. That's not, you know, you, you can't really live you know, being um, in a creative field and all that, which is not true. I mean, I do, a, I, I make a really great living. And it's, it's, it's just that I think there's a, um, there is a stigma to anything creative not being lucrative for some reason. Um, and so I think it, it, it makes a lot of kids feel like, oh, maybe I shouldn't pursue my dreams. And I've met so many kids like that, that, you know, had this kind of back pocket dream that they were keeping there and not even telling their parents, you know, that they right. either wanted to go into art or into design or writing or whatever. And, um, and it's such a shame, you know what I mean? To see kids not realizing their creative potential. Um, because again, I think creativity is, is culture, you know, that's how culture moves forward. And, and right. we need more of us being the people who really push things forward. But it takes a lot of hard work. Um, it takes yes. a lot of getting educated and um, being able to congregate with other people and express yourself, you know, properly, um, which are things that you know us as educators always strive to communicate to our to our students. You know, it is so important for you to be well rounded. Um, you know, don't take anything for granted. This is. Everything it's, is being done for a reason. Um, what advice uh, would you have for a student that, you know, hasn't chosen their path, hasn't chosen like their purpose? I think is to actually spend the time really looking inwards to figure out what it is that you want to do like i know for me you, you know i can't imagine having gone to school without the passion that i had for what i was doing because i think you you feel like you're maybe wasting time you're not sure why you're doing it and all that so i think it's actually really good to take the time to realize and to look back honestly i think look back all the way to the beginning of your life and think about what makes me happy consistently. Like when do I feel the most myself and the most fulfilled and excited and all of that. And then I think when you understand that it's a question of thinking about, okay, well, how can I turn that into something that I can live by, you know what I mean? And I can live with and I can turn into a career. And I think what's beautiful today is the fact that, you know, there is no more one way to, to do things. I mean, people start businesses at like 15 years old. It, it's like, I think what you need is an idea. And, and once you have an idea, obviously you have to find a way to make it concrete. But the first and foremost, it's like, what is 
the idea that really ignites you. You know, and that's when you realize, wow, this is a, this is a passion for me. This is what I mm -hmm. want to do. And then you have to figure out how to do it. You know, what kind of classes you need to take or who you need to surround yourself with or what is the path you're going to take. But I think the most important thing is figuring that out. Because, I mean, I, I, I knew when I was growing up, there were people that, that hadn't figured out. And, I mean, it took them a long time. And I, I don't think it's because they didn't know. I think it's because they didn't actually really spend the time to think about what that meant and how they could turn it into right. something. So it was easier to right. just follow some path and say, well, I'm going to become whatever I'm going to take. I'm going to become a lawyer or whatever. Things that they didn't really want to do. Because it takes effort, like you said. It takes a lot more effort to, and self-reflection you know, to take the time to figure out what is your your passion and and also what is your your mission for for people like what do you want to do for people because i think it's important not to only think about yourself right. um there's a part obviously that's important that yes you need to fulfill you but if the fulfillment can come through stuff that you do for other people and i think that's what you know that's what fashion is i mean you're not creating the clothes for yourself you're creating it for men and women that are going to wear something and it's going to change their outlook of themselves. It's going to change their outlook onto the world. Like fashion is powerful. I mean, it, it represents yeah. so much and it, it sets the mood. And even I think it's interesting when people say, well, I'm not into fashion. And I always say to them, well, but you are because you wear clothes. So I mean, if you weren't into fashion, then you'd run around naked, but, you know, most people right. don't. So every choice, right, that you make, whether it's, right. well, I'm just going to wear a t-shirt, it's like, you. and even the idea of, like, that you actually don't consciously choose a t-shirt, it says something about you, you, you know? And, right. and so, Right. And so fashion is, is expression. Fashion is you. It's an extension, and it's power. You know, I think when you see those things i was watching a documentary the other day the the michelle obama becoming um documentary and she was talking about fashion and the power of fashion and when she was you know first lady and and how you know she had to think long and hard about every single thing that she would put on in public because people would comment about it not just how it looked but what it what it meant you know and exactly. which designer you needed to wear and what color it was and what how it fit and how cover the arms or not cover the arms or all those codes, you know? Um, so anyway, so for some people, you know, fashion is a passion and, and, right. and that's an amazing thing because it's something they do for other people. And, um, and again, I don't think there's any right or wrong. I think it's, it's, it's only about what, you know, what fulfills you and what pushes you forward. Got it. Well, um, thank you so much for um, joining me today.